What else, July 4th? I'm kind of surprised there's nobody at the ramp this morning. We got a full moon out, feeling kind of crazy. But uh, I won't be hopping around different places on the river today and just having fun with some kind of new techniques and some new baits. Just kind of see if I like them or not. Ready running guns, time for blast off. Let's go. Morning folks, Todd here with you. Welcome back to Bassin 101. You can see behind me, it's gonna be a beautiful sunrise. Stuff I'm trying out today. I'm gonna fish this for a while this morning until I get down to the deeper water. I got me a black and blue Senko on here with a 5 alt lightning strike hook with a lead guard and one of those Hildebrandt's at a buzz for a quarter ounce. Uh, my theory is this might twist my line. I don't know, but I'm going to give it a, a shot. I'm up here at the mouth of the creek. I got a shallow rock flat out here that's pretty good size, probably 50 yards by 50 yards. About a foot and a half of water and I got some other rocks around over here and I got some uh, log jams I'm going to fish and then shoot my way down to the slough. So I thought I would try, I got, there's some stuff popping up around out here. So I thought I would try this bait and uh, just kind of see what it does. It's, it's different than a regular buzz bait so I don't know. Let's we'll see if they, if they hit this and hold on to it a little bit better. Well, I want to head on down to the slough. I feel all up around them trees and rock. One thing I'll give that rig, it'll come through anything. I was bouncing off of limbs. I was doing all kinds of stuff, throwing it right in the middle of brush. I couldn't see any line twist. I mean, as far as, uh, you know, big amounts of line twist, I didn't see it. Um, is that going to replace a buzz bait? Nah, I don't think so. But it definitely has a different sound. It doesn't have that usual, you know, it doesn't have that kind of sound to it. It's, it's a very soft uh, kind of sound. I guess you could almost call it a finesse buzz bait. But I think I'll probably. If I do keep buzz baits in my lineup, I think I'm just going to stick with the traditional style buzz bait. But, uh, yeah, go down the slough here, fish in deep water. The water's fairly clear. It looks good anyway. I will try a couple of the different rigs. Okay. Experiment number two. I've got me... I've been wanting to try these for a couple of years. I keep seeing them. The uh, Bizbaits Dizzy Diamond. So I thought that was kind of an interesting. Uh, got a big old bubble type tail on it. It does float. I mean, it does. This thing floats straight up in the, in the water. The green pumpkin purple flake kind of thing. It's just a sample pack I, I got with them on an eighth ounce uh, shaky head. And uh, but I'd use some Mega Strike today instead of the stinky jelly stuff. Although the scent they put on these worms is pretty strong. I'll go ahead and put some of that on there. Don't get that Mega Strike stuff around cats, they'll try to eat it. <laughs> it's, Especially at, at one Siamese we got, boy, she, she tears into it. But this is a, they call it a six inch worm. It's actually a five and a half inch worm. And uh, I actually like that better. Rather than just a standard six inch worm, just kind of gives you a, gives you a shorter, a little bit shorter version. But man, it's got a lot of action to it. I'll chunk this thing for a little bit. 
I'm in the slough now, so you got to be kidding me. I think that was a little red eye. Yeah, a little tap, 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 tap. But hey, got something off of it. First cast, so. Let's go on with this dude. Well, I had him on for a second. <laughs> He's just kind of swimming off with it. Ripped it right off of the screw head. This is a this is an owner shaky head. I like the uh, the screw eyes better because it's got the the center pin. I like those a whole lot better. And I am bringing it all the way through, barely skin hooking it. That way that worm still stays straight. And I don't have the barb crushed. When I'm using a jig head like this, I don't crush the barb. It gives him too much leverage. I just didn't have him hooked very well, apparently. That's okay. They're hitting it. Well, he's not big, but it's a start. I have had so many hits on this worm. Little small mouth. It's not big, but he is pretty. Look at that look at the coloring. Beautiful fish. Thank you. Man, you guys don't know how many bass I've I've been fishing this worm about 10 or 15 minutes. You don't know how many I've had hooked for about two or three seconds and lost them. They're just not hitting that hard. But I don't know if you can see in that worm all through here. It has, it is just absolutely just chewed up. I mean, it, they they've been hitting it good. I just can't get a hook in them, or I can't keep them hooked. And that one just kind of loaded up on. It's kind of picked it up. I just kind of felt mush, and I held it for just a second. And he started swimming away. So here's something I think it's interesting. I took a little chartreuse die and put some on the tail because I thought, you know, maybe if I did the chartreuse tail, it might get them to grab onto it a little bit better. Yeah, until they bite the tail off of it. And honestly, before that happened, I never got any more hits. So that's kind of interesting right there. They, uh, they'll take it, but not with a chartreuse tail. It isn't that interesting. Yep, you don't know till you mess around. Sometimes doing a chartreuse tail will make them take the bait better. Um, but in this instance here, even though I'm around smallmouth, there's largemouth in this run too. But uh, chartreuse tail was a no-go. So I'm just going to go back to the to the stock worm and uh, put some more mega strike on there. <laughs> I don't know if that's any difference. I really don't. I just I saw it the other day in the house, and I was like, I'll throw that in the box and take it with me tomorrow so leave my stinky jelly in the box I was still throwing this worm yeah I was getting hits on it chartreuse tail is definitely not the deal that's just gonna make a bunch of red eyes and long-eared sunfish pick it right off so I'm not going to fool with that. Well, I'm on the shallower side here where the brush piles are. I've shown you those before at about four or five foot of water. And I've gone back to throwing that uh, the buzz bait Cinco. I figured I'd try it. 
I love these brush piles before I come back to them later through a worm. They'll give time to calm down a little bit and try them again before the... I just wanted to try this before the sun came up on it. But I will admit, this it, you know, it's very similar to like an inline buzzer. I guess if you think about it, that kind of is an inline buzzer. But, uh, you know, with that Senko on there, and I've been kind of, you know, twitching it a little bit, making it spurt some water and and everything, just trying to see what I can do to get a hit. Man, guys, I ain't got nothing on this thing so far. I still think if I end up putting a buzz bait in my lineup, that's, that's what it's going to be is a buzz bait. But this is a cool little deal right here, though. I mean, because you can throw it. It comes over everything. I'm just kind of moving back. Kind of drifting backwards with it, just kind of hitting the. I, mean, I don't mind throwing back in the stuff because it'll come right over it. And you would think with that thing bumping around everywhere and flippy flopping around the brush and everything else that something would come up and get it. So far, nothing. The only thing I've even seen come up on top this morning has been carp. So I don't know, it's... I'm just about out of the brush piles now. I mean, I'm throwing it right back in there, too. Where they just don't see anything on top. I guess I'll rig something else on here. But, but again, like I said, you know, this is a, a 5 alt Strike King Lightning Strike hook. They're discontinued, but you can still find them on eBay once in a while. And just thread it, just straight thread it on a, a Senko. And then it's got a little split ring. And it's a, that's a Hildebrandt. Atabuzz is what they call it. But, uh, and I'll be honest with you, I don't see any line twist in this thing. I, I'm really shocked. I mean, I, I figured that this Senko would be just going all around everywhere with that buzz bait blade going. But no, it's been doing pretty good. So if you guys want to try a rake like that, uh, absolutely give it a shot. I'm going back over here to the deeper side of the slough. I'm going to keep on throwing that little dizzy diamond. It's a bad little worm. But I like it because it's it's short. It's just a little bit longer than a Senko, a little thinner, and it floats. That's basically the reason I got I, I wanted to try those. That's why I got a little, little sample pack just to see what they were like. And uh, second base, I almost turn around and hit the <laughs> deep side of the slough. It's not that far across this river. I say it's probably uh, maybe a hundred feet across here. Maybe a hundred twenty. I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing. Let's just keep on going. Well, got me another one. This one was kind of swimming with it. I mean, a large mouth. No, he's not big. Not big. Kind of pale, too, isn't he? That's all right. That's two on a Dizzy Diamond. Interesting. I had this thing in the shallow water this morning. Messing with it just to see what it looked like before I started fishing this morning. And, yeah, I got a flat spot and a shaky head, but, you know, shaky heads will roll back and forth. They really won't stand up like everybody thinks they do. But with this Dizzy Diamond, I mean, it floats just like this. And just, that tail stays up. So it keeps the head up and everything else. But 
I actually thought he was a red eye. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, I thought he was a red eye. I was just kind of holding on to him. He just kept swimming with us. I said, no, that's not a red eye, that's a, that's a bass. Okay, that was fun. Uh, that's two on a Dizay Diamond. They want to try those worms for a couple of years. Now this is not one of the colors I would choose from my arsenal, but I figured, hey, it's a green pumpkin with purple flake. Green pumpkin is basically how I look at it. But uh, that's pretty cool. We'll keep on trying this thing. Well guys, I think I might call it. It's starting to get pretty windy out here. They weren't calling for this wind today. Imagine that. But uh, overall, there's, there's a nice morning. Until the wind picked up anyway. I managed to get a couple little ones on that thing. But you know what? Catching Even if you catch little fish on something new, it builds confidence. And I tell you, I like that worm. And uh, somebody had to put me an order in at Biz Baits and give, give me some, di some diamond, dizzy diamonds. Those things are nice. And yeah, I've always wondered about that worm. But yeah, I like it. But I was out here a couple of days ago. And uh, it was kind of a short morning. I didn't stay out very long at all. But I was throwing a Zoom Mag 2. Yeah, that's They call that a 9-inch worm. It's about an 8-inch worm. But I was throwing one. And check out this footage right here on Texas Rigged Zoom Mag 2. Okie dokie. Eight number three. You're probably going to look at this and go, in a river? Zoom Mag 2. You know, they call this a 9-inch worm. In reality, if you measure it where it's hanging from here down to here, it's about a 7 3 quarter 8 inch worm. It's not that big. This is blue fleck. One of my favorite all time worm colors. A 3 16 ounce tungsten and a 4 alt black nickel, uh, just an old school sprout eagle claw hook with the barb smashed. And uh, this is on a 5.5 foot Larry Nixon rod. Uh, Daiwa PS10 14 pound test and uh, and that reels quiet in it. <laughs> Ball bearings help. But I'm going to uh, test this worm out today because it's one of the worms that I'm debating on. But I've caught them, I've caught them on big, like, you know, seven and a half inch flip tails and stuff like that in here, so. Definitely not a smallmouth type lure. We you know, have a smallmouth and large mouth run together in here, so I'm willing to give it a shot. Wow. Okay, let me tell you a little story here. I had two fish knock the fire out of this worm. They're suspended up in this brush. And had one hit it, tore my worm all to pieces. <laughs> and uh, this one here came right out, buried me right up in that brush. I mean, I just 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 keep tension on him, guys. Don't don't keep cranking. He's a good one. As a matter of fact, he's worthy of getting a weight. Okay. But yeah, he had me buried up in that brush. And he, he actually pulled me over. He's there, buddy. Two. Right at two. And he's pretty. Look at the size of that dude. And fat. Wow. Looks like he can go better in two, doesn't he? Well, there you go. All right, thank you very much, sir. Boom! And he also pulled me right over the brush pile. <laughs> but uh, that was on a Zoom Mag 2. 
And they say the bigger worms catch the bigger fish. The way I've got this thing rigged up, guys, I know ribbon tails kind of throw people off. Especially when you have uh, two-tone colors like what Culprit comes out with. You have to retie that. They juggled up my line. Um, I rig it tail up, just like I do any other worm. You know, even if they're two-tone color, you got the hook going this way, and the tail going the same direction. That way, when you stop this worm on the bottom, it's going to want to float the tail up rather than off to the side. Not only that, but that is the least amount of line twist as well. Man, how's it going? You know, still fishing the Zoom right here, um, the Zoom Mag 2. Yeah, you know, some of you guys probably do this, but there's a lot of you guys out there that uh, are new to fishing, or just don't fish, uh, say a Texas reed worm that much because you don't have confidence in it. Trust me, I fished with guys in tournaments before who just didn't have confidence in a worm. Uh, they're out there, <laughs> but that's okay. But all I'm doing with this here, you know, when I get it out, I'm gonna let it sink. But once it, it's in the bottom, once this thing hits the bottom, I'm gonna let it sit for a few seconds. I'm just gonna very put tension on that line. I'm gonna bump it a couple of times like that and just let it sit. And then I'll start working it like you normally would. Because most, most of the time, when you throw that worm out there, they watch it go down if it sits there and you barely bump it they'll hit it or they'll grab it once it gets on the bottom so you gotta be a little patient with that the way I learned this was by having professional overruns <laughs> backlashes and by the time you pick out your backlash and you go to reel it in your slack and you go to pick up on it there's a fish there so it just became habit, not the backlash, but when you throw a worm out there, it's just a habit for me to let it sit for a few seconds and just barely pick up on it and bump it one time. And if nothing gets it after that, go ahead and start working it like you normally would. However they, however they want it worked. And yeah, I have this pegged, but it slides up the line easily. I just thought I'd throw that out there to you guys because, you know, some guys don't, you know, they think, well, once it's the bottom, you start working it back. You know, like right now it's on the bottom. I'll put a little bit of tension on it, feel it. Bump it just gently a couple of times. Keep that line semi-tight. Pick up on it. Go ahead and start working like I normally do. It's pretty much that way, and it's, and it's a lot easier for you to feel everything. But remember, you don't fish a worm on slack line. You fish on a semi-tight line because you want to give it that fall. Sometimes if I come over a big limb, I'll literally just drop the rod tip and get a complete slack. But then I pick it up like I do on the initial cast. I pick it up and make sure there's nothing there. And always, guys, be a line watcher. Watch that line for any lateral movement, forward or back movement, sudden slackness, or you just, you know, you just, you're in, in between bumps and you see that line just go Poof. That tells you right there. Then you just pick up on it and pop them. Something else I forgot too, guys. On well, Texas rigging, especially worm, you got, you know, this is a mag too. This is a pretty good sized worm. It's not really that big if you think about it. But a 3 16 ounce weight, to me, is an all-around size or just about any kind of worm fishing. I don't care if it's a power worm, twister phenom, doesn't matter. Now, if I want a really slow fall, of course, I go to the eighth ounce. But something I want to throw out here to you, when you're fishing brush, especially heavy brush like I've got here, you know, about four or five foot of water, you don't need a big quarter, three-eighths, or half ounce weight to get this worm down through the brush. I got off here a 14-pound test, four-aught, you know, sprout style hook 
and I can get this worm down into the trees. Just give it, give it line. Give it time to get down. If you go too heavy of a weight, you're going to stay hung up all the time. Now, I, I know it sounds weird, but it, it will happen. Now, if you're in a bass boat and you're standing up, oh, you can get away with it. But when you're fishing from the bank or you're fishing in a canoe or a kayak or a john boat and you're kind of low to the water fishing, you don't need a heavy weight. Because you're just going to get bogged up in the you know in the crosshairs of the tree limbs and stuff like that. That worm's going to get there. You know, right in those crosshairs like that, get caught caught up in there and get bound up if it's got a heavy weight. For the lighter weight, you can just kind of give it a little pop or just give a little shake of the rod tip. It'll come out through that thing, come right over it. But this will get down in the brush. But it has, you know, always use the lightest weight you can get away with because it's just a more natural presentation and it just it, it just falls so much better. Just figured I'd throw that out there to you. That was a nice one. That was a nice one. That's the only one I had that day. I missed a bunch of hits on that worm. But uh, yeah, that worm was actually pretty early in the morning. I mean, I caught that. I was probably at the first spot maybe 10 minutes and caught that fish. But that was still fun to do. Can't beat a Texas rig a lot of times, man. Just, just go back to the basics. Fish Texas rig. If, you, if nothing else is working, hey, why not? That's all I got today, guys. I'm glad you got to come along with me. And uh, we got to do a little bit of fishing anyway. That always beats working, don't it? So anyway, until next time, and the Father bless you in keeping Yeshua's name, and as always, fish home.